I've used many methods to capture all of my content into Obsidian, but the method I'm going to show you in this video might be the most easy and low friction of all of the ones I've discovered so far. You're going to learn about a new app that I've started using and how it fits into capturing information on mobile as well as on desktop. You'll see the setups I have as well as the Obsidian plugins that are needed to make the note capturing possible and I'll run you through all of the different configurations so you can start using exactly the same method that I do. So we'll start with how it works on a laptop and I'll take you onto my MacBook to show you exactly how I do this when I'm sat at my desk. Okay, so here we are in Obsidian. Firstly, I'll quickly run you through my folder structure just so you know what we're working with and how I capture information. So um, I use a modified version of the para method um, from Tiago Forte, uh, where we keep projects the same, where it's basically just where you keep folders of notes that are geared towards certain outcomes. So you can see I want to release a new PKM for students course, which you'll get information about if you click the top link in the description and sign up, but I might touch on that a little bit more later in the video. Um, so you can see all of the notes that I'm taking specifically related to this outcome and this project. So that's where the notes go in the projects folder. Areas in my own system called Parazettle is a Zettel custom. So it's atomic notes of one idea per note, which are interlinked in the Obsidian graph. And in resources, that's kind of the more useful content for long term, where I might need to reference it again. A lot of it is other people's writing where especially in my in my readwise folder where i've got all of the articles and readwise highlights and notes of things that i've captured and the archive is where all of these old folders go to um not clutter up the rest of the vault and the most important folder of all that we're going to get into where i capture all of my content into is the inbox folder so you can see here, it's simply just a place where it's, it's a dumping ground basically for the notes that I take. And so that's the folder structure and we'll get into exactly how I capture the content. But first I want to introduce to you the app that I use to do all of this. So it's called Whisperflow and it's a transcription app. And in the past I've tried using a lot of these different transcription apps from Apple's own proprietary kind of transcription into text boxes where you can hold down the function key or the globe key and it will transcribe for you into a text box. But none of these methods I had used before Whisperflow were actually good enough for me to use consistently, but Whisperflow is, and I'm going to demonstrate it to you in this video. I'm going to show you how I add it into my vault so I can show you how I capture all of my thoughts quickly and easily with really, really low friction, because as you'll see, it operates from speech now as opposed to even just typing out the notes. Back here into the vault, we're going to require one additional plugin in Obsidian for, at least for desktop usage. When I show you mobile usage, it's a little bit different, but we are going to require the Quick Add plugin, which is a popular plugin that allows you to add certain templated content into your vault. And it's what I'll use to create these inbox notes and give it all of its certain attributes. So it's it's very simple in comparison to all of the other templates that I kind of use in my vault. So we'll I'll take you into a community plugin quick add, which you might need to install if you don't have it installed, but you just do that by going to community plugins and clicking browse and then type in quick add in and it comes up so you can see I've already got it installed. But we'll go to the settings and the quick add configuration that is of interest in this video is quick, just there, so new quick note. So the configuration for this is to simply capture to that inbox folder where all of the information goes every single time I capture it because of course you can go through that inbox and filter it and put it in different folders in your vault later if you need to. But all I do to title those files is give them a date stamp. So I use this just here. You can see it's going to save a note in five hyphen inbox, which is the inbox folder. And the note is going to be called the year 
the month, the day, the hour, minute, second, just because I take quite a few of these notes and I don't want them to be called the same thing and run into um, conflicts that way. And I don't need to even use a template to create this note because, as you'll see in a moment, the note is blank because I don't want to try and configure too much before I actually process the note and move it into a suitable folder in my vault. So it's literally just a blank note like that. We select that we want the note to open when we create it and we select focus new pane and capture format. You can see the capture format is empty, which means that no content is going to be captured the second we open the note. Um, so it's a very simple configuration like that because like I said, we don't want to make it too complicated at the moment. And one thing I have done as well for this quick add configuration is I've assigned it a hotkey because I capture new content all the time. And so you'll do this by, first of all, you want to make sure you have that little kind of lightning bolt icon switched on because if you switch it off, you won't be able to access it in the command palette or maybe not even in the hotkeys, I don't think. So you want that to be switched on and then you go to hotkeys and you search quick add and you find your certain configuration. There's mine, new quick, and you can see that I've bound it to, um, well, it's command shift Q for most people, but I rebind my keys, so don't worry about that. Just pick something that you can access very quickly and easily so that you've not got any pressure on you to make a new note in a certain way or not. Um, and then I'll show you what this looks like in my vault. Say, okay, I want to capture some new information. I've got some new information and I will just press that keyboard shortcut and I'm opened up into a brand new inbox note ready to capture. And this is where Whisperflow comes in. And so when you install Whisperflow, you go through uh, the setup process. I mean, they guide you through that very nicely, so I'm not going to show you that, but once you've got that set up, all you have to do is hold down the key that you've assigned to be your transcription key. Uh, so I would do the function or globe key and hold it down and I speak. And you can see at the bottom of the screen that it's recording what I say now. You can see this little flow bar um, just there. And once I release that, it's transcribed everything I've said with perfect accuracy into that inbox note. And so this just blows typing your words out of the water because say you've got something really complicated or you've got little time to take a note or something you've got. Uh, so I'll show you an example. Well, okay, today I managed to make some progress on the project about making a new course for students and I just wanted to quickly capture all the information to do with this so I updated the minimal note taking folder, the note that talks about Zotero and how to manage references and things like that and the progress is good so far so I hope I can keep going. And if we leave that and you can see that the, the transcription is almost immaculate like it's picked up Zotero which is um, software that I use for referencing or used for referencing whilst I was in university, but it's fantastic in this way in just being able to really quickly capture content. And then all I have to do is access those notes from my inbox and then I can go through and process them at my leisure. But that's exactly the configuration that I use for desktop. It's just a simple keyboard shortcut and quick add configuration and then you use Whisperflow to enter content into your notes. And so now I'll show you through my mobile setup which is a little bit more complicated to integrate with iOS shortcuts and things like that. But it's definitely still worthwhile setting up because being able to take notes on the move is really, really useful as well, especially hands-free, so being able to speak the note. First we'll go over the quick add configuration in my mobile Obsidian Vault. Excuse me. And this is exactly the same as on desktop. So I'll show you that quickly. You can see the same vault. I use Obsidian Sync, but there are different methods of syncing your notes between desktop and mobile. So I'll take you to Quick Add and show that I have, I call it something slightly different here, quick note, but if you look through, it's exactly the same in that there's no template because I don't need one. The file is opened and the new pane's focused and there's no capture format. And 
the thing is on mobile now what you need is a app that is going to configure a URI which is simply a link that you can open and cause to execute a specific action in said app. So I will show you what this looks like for mobile Obsidian. What you'll need is advanced URI. So again, we install by going to community plugins and browse and then advanced URI. And you can see I've got it installed already. And so once you've got that installed, you head into advanced URI. You don't need, you don't even need to do that. Actually, you need to go to your command palette and then select advanced URI, copy URI for command, because that will allow you to generate a link that when run will take you to your Obsidian Vault and help you execute what we're about to see here. So you click copy URI for a command, you don't specify the file, and then because you've kept your little lightning icon on, on your quick add, then you can search quick add, and then new quick note. And so you can see at the bottom there, it said advanced URI, copy to your clipboard. And now what you'll need from here, I'm sorry, this is a um, iOS, iOS workflow, um, but what you'll need to do here then is to go to your shortcuts app and you can see I've already got a take a quick note configuration set up, which if I demonstrate to you, this is what is going to happen once we've set up what we need to set up. If I demonstrate that to you now, you can see it takes me straight to Obsidian with a inbox file that we can straight away capture information into. But what I'm going to do first is show you how I set that up. So I'm going to completely delete that shortcut just as a form of demonstration and we're going to click top right to make a new shortcut and then what we need to do is search the action open URLs and you add that in there and then you paste your advanced URI that you've just found from Obsidian and click done and then what I like to do is I like to choose a new icon for it so we'll go we'll match it with the whisper flow one but obviously it just works just works straight away with that safari icon if you need it to so you can see i've got open urls i'll probably change that to new quick notes a little bit later on but you can see again if i click that now you'll have to first permit obsidian to be used so you click allow there and then straight away you're taken to your Obsidian app with a new inbox note that you can use Whisperflow to transcribe into. So I'll show you that now. And it's pretty similar to on desktop. It takes a couple of extra setup steps for iOS, but they take you through that when you install the app. And so you'll open up your Whisperflow keyboard, start your flow, you're taken to the app and then back. And now I'm transcribing, so I'm transcribing some new content into this inbox note and I don't even need to type which is good because I can't type when I walk anywhere and once you're done with that you click that you're done and it transcribes instantly into your mobile inbox and that is about the the ins and outs of how I capture information now on my desktop and on my mobile using this new app as part of my workflow and it's very very quick and simple once you've got it set up which is fantastic because like I just made a joke of then I'm not very good at typing when I'm on the move sometimes I don't want to type when I'm on the move and this is a fantastic substitute we'll go over where you can add this iOS shortcut now to be able to take these quick notes from anywhere you can add them to your lock screen and I'll show you what this shortcut is for me in a moment but what I'll show you is first you can edit your lock screen click customize you go in to there you add a shortcut widget and then in that widget you'll be able to tap the actual widget and select that you want your shortcut of choice to be placed there and so once that's done you can then launch that and have a brand new inbox note straight from your lock screen you can add it as an icon on your home screen by, um, if you click that three dots icon, then you should be able to do it. If you click the down button at the top, you put add to home screen and then click add. 
and then you're able to open up a new note from your home screen as well which is really useful and last of all you can do it from the control center too so you hold down on your control center click out of control and then go to uh, shortcuts so you click select shortcut you choose your shortcut open your URLs and then you will have that there and again it's a new new note so once you've integrated this with your iOS shortcuts it's very easy to just be able to create a new note and speak into your phone at any point that you want and it's easier than typing so you can do it on the move you can do it when you're speaking to somebody so I found this really really frictionless in comparison to what I've had to do before which up to this point was typing so even the fact that that is just removed is very very useful I will show you that final shortcut on my lock screen now and what that is so to add that to your lock screen what you need first is another iOS shortcut which I'll show you now which is this one here take flow notes so if I show you the menu all you have to do to create that is click new shortcut and then when you've got whisper flow installed you go take flow note like that and that's all you have to do that's a, another brand new shortcut there that will do exactly the same thing but once you've got that set up you add it to your lock screen in the same way we just did the quick note and this is it on the left here and what you want to do there is once you've got that from your lock screen you can click that new note and you can see how that notification at the bottom has now changed and it's now transcribing exactly what I say and will show it in the flow app which I'll show you in a moment which is fantastic because you don't even have to unlock your phone now to take a note and now it's not saved to Obsidian but if I finish this note here and click save then what we can do is we can go to the whisper flow app and here is this top note that is exactly what we've just spoken to our lock screen and if we were to want to save it to obsidian all we've got to do is long press it click that copy and because we've got our other note configuration set up we straight away open an inbox note in obsidian paste your text and you are in business there as well that is just about rounding up the entire configuration of whisper flow that i use to take notes on my mobile device and on my desktop and it's been so useful. I mean, I'm somebody who is very, very wary when it comes to introducing new software into my stack. So, I mean, I've stuck with Obsidian for years now, even though I was chronic kind of shiny object syndrome app switcher at the start, I've stuck with Obsidian. I've stuck with a lot of different apps for a long time and not really been into adding anything new into the stack. But Whisperflow I discovered a number of months ago now and it's been absolutely fantastic for this that I've described in this video and loads of other things too so I'm more than happy to have added that into my software stack as well and so that's the end of the video and as I mentioned previously I'm working on a new PKM for students course seeing as just the other day I finished my very very last day and exam at university and as you can see, I'm somewhere new now. I'm back home living with my parents for the time being until I or my friend finds a job and then we can move out. We're planning to move to, to Reading near London. And anyway, with all that being said, I've finished studying and I'm putting together a course that goes over personal knowledge management for students. And if you want to be notified when that course goes live and also get a free two week email course that talks about that system that I described earlier in the video when I was on my desktop so you're in projects areas resources archive inbox which is Forte's power method with a Zettelkast and as the areas folder then you can click the top link in the description and learn more about the system which I call Parazettel and be notified about that new course release when you provide me just with your email and you'll get it sent through and you can subscribe at any time if you don't like what I'm sending you um, but other than that that has been me and thank you for watching and I will see you soon take care